Hello and welcome back to Gloomhaven. This video is kindly sponsored by Asmodee Digital and Co-op has just been released. So if you want to check it out, there is a link in the description. This is the digital adaptation of the classic, very well received board game. And they've done a great job. They really, really have. And so far, I am very much enjoying it. We're going to be doing the Brain of a Brawn mission in just a second, which is going to unlock an additional character for us. Let's travel there right now and see what we can do. Now, personally, I feel like the Tinkerer is probably one of my favorite characters. I said that in the previous episode, but I really think that the unique quality that each individual mercenary has is paramount. I feel like they have very much prioritized the character designs and it is done a, I, I, I don't know what it is, but every single one has its own personality stamp right on it. Anyway, the trainer informs you that the Quattro had last been seen heading to the basement underneath an abandoned mansion to the south of the city. You reach the mansion and find the front door wide open and small footprints in the thick dust. You follow these to a door to the deep dark basement. Let us enter the dungeon. And of course, the, the living bones would be in the basement, wouldn't it? I mean, oh, come on, there's gotta be some kind of undead in there. All right, meet the Tinkerer. He's a great support character to have on a team that can also take on multiple enemies in a pinch. Look at all those skeletons. I'd say this counts as one. Currently, he is wounded and will take one damage at the start of his turns, so you ought to heal him as soon as possible with that minor health potion. Looking at where the enemies in this room are, I advise you go as late as possible in this round. Sometimes it's better to go slow and let the enemies come to you, so you aren't at risk of being attacked. Then you can use one of the Tinkerer's famous area of effect attacks to deal some serious damage. And you can recognize such abilities by their hex-shaped patterns on the ability card. All right, so perfect thing for us to do right now is to literally do ink bomb first. As you can see by the hex little design there on the card, you can see that this will be in a three hex uh, formation and we're gonna be selecting the first one there and we should probably select heal or something like, uh, actually no, not heal, uh, probably toxic bolt or something like that, yeah. Probably something like that, but we also need to heal ourselves too. So let's uh, let's actually just end our selection first, and then we will heal ourselves because we still have two HP. So bear that in mind. We're going to be taking one damage, and then we'll heal up for three, and then we should be able to utilize our AOE attack. So we'll just take the damage right now, not a problem right there. And then we will do um, healing potion, confirm action, perfectly fine, still perfectly fine. And now, here we go. You may have noticed that if you use a heal ability when wounded, the character not only recovers hit points, but loses the wound condition. This is very useful. Healing can also remove a poison condition, but in that case, you will only remove the condition and regain no hit points. Th that's obviously um, a big upset, but uh, I think we're going to be absolutely fine. Now, bear in mind that what you can also do is you also have the ability to select the formation of your AOE by pressing R on your keyboard. So basically what you can do here is if I put my cursor in the center here and you press R, look at this, you can see that it goes all the way around. So you have different formations here and you can customize which units you're going to attack specifically. So in my opinion, that's very cool. I'm probably going to be, uh, probably going to be attacking like so. And let's see how that goes. Oh, so much damage, so much damage. I was actually hoping for a little bit more damage there, maybe even to kill uh, two of them, but we only killed one. So that is not particularly good. I'm actually gonna be skipping the movement here because of course we don't really wanna move anywhere. And hopefully we're going to be able to kill the remaining ones. Boom, ink bomb was pretty good, eh? I'll leave you to finish off the rest of these bad guys. Did you know you can rotate? Yeah, well, I, I just said that actually. Anyway, we're going to probably be doing a short rest. 
And that is going to remove this, which is absolutely fine. There we go. And now we will get net shooter, which is definitely something we want to use as soon as possible. I'm just going to take both of these. I want to take the lowest initiative possible so that we will get the first turn. Oh yes, easily in actual fact, because of course the living bones are going to use a 64 initiative. All right, so now we can do net shooter. And I should be able to do it from here. There we go. Nice. If anyone survives, by the way, I will be able to... Nope, never mind. I will be able to uh, use the secondary attack on Toxic Bolt. As you can see right there, it does 5 damage. Pretty insane as well. Alright, end the Tinkerer's turn. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. This little guy packs quite the punch. Let's sign him up and look for some paid jobs for the guild to take on. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Oh yes, you bet I am. Okay, let us claim the rewards. We're getting a proper mercenary guild together now. Speaking of paid jobs, I've met someone who has requested our help. Peace be with you. I am the priestess here, sworn to the sanctuary of the Great Oak. I thank you for meeting with me, as we at the sanctuary are in dire need of assistance. You see, the holy crypt in the catacombs beneath the sanctuary has been broken into and defiled by deranged cultists, raising hordes of undead to do their nefarious bidding. I beg of thee, please help us be rid of this menace. All too common an occurrence these days. Anyhow, sounds like an opportunity to try out our two latest recruits together. Get to it. Alright, so that means that we will be able to go over to the Tomb of Horrors and there are going to be much, much more menacing beasties to fight here. The keeper meets you at the entrance to the temple, where many of the acolytes look fearfully towards the building. She explains that portals have opened in the crypts, and that although they have a holy symbol capable of closing them, no one is brave enough to enter the crypt. She gives you the artifact and explains, you will need to remain in the crypt for some time, and then the symbol will close and dispel the portals. Good luck. She ushers you forwards. Alright, so we have a living corpse to deal with here this time as well, so that's obviously going to be a bit of an uncomfortable situation. We're just going to be like, hello living corpse, uh, you're alive and, and kind of wanting to murder us. That is not very nice. The crypt is bathed in an unholy light, emanating from mysterious portals in the corners of the room. You brace yourselves for battle against whatever evil may come through. Alright, so let's take a look here. Okay, so we just have to survive three rounds. So that's the that's the challenge, basically, what we've got to do here. Okay, so freezing Nova is obviously going to be something that I would like to do. However, I don't think that's really... Uh, not entirely sure, to be honest. Actually, how... how this guy's got one movement... And this, this, oh, this guy has two movement. Okay, so if I move, no, if he moves here, here, then he can attack. If he moves here, here, then he can attack. If he moves here, here, then he can attack. Okay, so in my opinion, what we're going to need to do is we can pull this guy, actually, using hook gun, as you can see. But we might need to move forward to be able to do that first. Oh, no, actually, the range is three. So I think we should be able to do that because if you see here, it's one, two, three three so we should be, wait a minute one two three yeah so we should be able to push pull him through the bear trap which is going to deal three damage and then we can do something else yeah that seems pretty good to me in, in, in actual fact so i think we're going to use the top option on hook gun and then we will do oh, i could actually use net shooter to immobilize the other one that has a range of three as well so is that actually going to be enough one, two, three. One, two, three. Actually, this might not even be enough, to be honest. We might need to move forward. Hmm. I'm actually a bit worried about that. Uh, okay, okay. So, I think what we'll do is we'll use restorative mist. <sighs> yeah, I think we'll use restorative mist because what that can do is that can move us forward by one, which will guarantee that we'll be able to pull the uh, the enemy along and we'll also be able to move a little bit away from the other skeleton because what I'd like to do is utilize the trap as much as we possibly can. So what I'll do is I'll move forward, then use hook gun, 
That will work quite nicely in my opinion. Then what we're going to need to do is use Mana Bolt to finish off the Living Bones. And we also need to move with the Spell Weaver. If we don't move, then we're going to have some problems. So, so we could use any of these, actually. So I'm going to use Ride the Wind, I think. So we're going to do Mana Bolt and Ride the Wind. And basically what we want to try to do... Oh, there's a spawner over there. Oh, you see that? Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, we need to survive three rounds. Oh, okay. So this is going to be interesting. Ooh. <laughs> Let's see if it works, eh? Let's see if it works. We might very well not be okay here, but we'll see. Okay, so they're, they're just going to move one. Okay, they're just going to move one. That's not even that bad. All right. So, first off, let's move over... I'm, I'm thinking we'll probably move about... Probably move here? I mean, that's right into melee range, which is not even necessary, to be honest. But I think, I think that's going to be good. Yeah, let's do that. All right, so let's move into melee. That's going to move us over there. And then we can use Mana Bolt. Skip the movement. Mana Bolt is going to deal some decent damage. Nice, that's good enough, because now it's at 3 HP. And then we'll end the Spellweaver's turn. The Living Corpse is actually rather fast, amusingly enough. And we are now going to move forward by a small amount because what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to make it so that this guy is going to uh because i mean they have the ability you see to move twice but i don't know what they're going to do before it happens so we need to be careful on that okay so let's have a look here okay so heal adjacent allies i can skip that action because i don't want to do that we are going to pull this guy it's actually going to do damage anyway so let's just um, do damage. Oh, never mind. <laughs> okay, apparently he's dead. So we can we can actually save the trap, which is pretty good, I guess. Oh, living corpse moved fa much faster than I thought. Okay, uh, that might be a bit problematic then. Okay, so there's the other living bones. Okay, so we survived one round so far, which I suppose is decent. Okay, so now what we can do is we can use... Uh, we could use fire orbs, and we can also use uh, flame strike. We could also do freezing nova. Obviously, at the moment, that's not really necessary. Fire orbs would be pretty good for flame strike, in my opinion. So, if we could do uh, that's a heal. Don't really need the heal, to be honest. Okay, so let's do let's do fire orbs but we're going to do freezing nova as well in my opinion this is uh, this is adjacent as well so the enemy is going to have to move towards us which mm, yeah it's probably going to be possible it's probably going to be possible for them to do that the living corpse actually moved much faster than i anticipated as well which is obviously problematic okay let's try this and then we've got a whole bunch of options on the Tinkerer here. So this is going to be pretty easy in my opinion. So I should theoretically be able to quite easily destroy everyone in range. Oh, wow. You can actually... Yeah, that's pretty crazy. Okay, so I'm going to do... Uh, I don't really want to burn this, if at all possible. So I would like to be able to do Ink Bomb... Uh, that's going to burn that as well. Okay, well, we need to eliminate these two, in my opinion. So, let's see what I can do about that. We need to move relatively quickly as well. So, let's do Toxic Bolt then, I guess. We'll do Toxic Bolt and Ink Bomb. And let's see how that goes. Oh! The Living Bones is going to be moving faster. Okay, that's interesting. It's not going to move, though, as you can see. It's actually not going to move. So let's see what happens with that, actually. All right, so we're going to use Ink Bomb, which is going to deal some pretty decent damage. Can I? Yes, I can do damage to both of them, can't I? Can I not? <gasps> 
No, no, no. I apparently cannot do damage to both of them. Oh, dear. Okay. Yeah, I needed them to stand next to each other. That is kind of unfortunate, to be honest. Okay, so I guess because the living corpse is going to take a little bit longer to get here, I'm going to just use it round about here, I guess. Ugh. That is a real shame. Oh, but maybe not, because we killed it in one hit. That was great. Okay, so now we can uh, potentially use this, but uh, unfortunately I can't. Uh, I guess we could just save Toxic Bolt for another time, which I think is decent. Okay, so this Living Bones is going to be move. I actually didn't move at all, hilariously enough. Okay, so now we can use Fire Orbs, which is obviously going to be a bit of a waste now, because I actually wanted to target multiple people with it, but I guess we'll do it. That's going to deal some pretty considerable damage too. So that's only one HP left on that living corpse, which is good. And now we can just skip this action right here and end the turn. And now he's going to be moving and he can actually attack. Oh, for zero damage. Oh, yeah, that's what you get. Oh, that is what you get. Thank you very much. Okay, so now what we can potentially do, we have the fire element Oh, wow. Living Corpse Elite. Hello there. Okay, yeah, that's a bit problematic, isn't it? Okay, so revive all your burn cards um, or recover all your burn cards. Technically, what I can do is that, but then I can't use Flame Strike. But I could use the secondary ability on Flame Strike. So I think we're just going to do that. I could get Mana Bolt back, actually, if I do short rest, but then reviving Ether might be discarded, and we don't want to take that chance. So we're going to be a little bit more careful about things. Okay, so, stun shot. Ooh, that looks really good. That actually looks really good. Okay, so net shooter we're probably going to use once again. And enhancement field seems pretty good. Okay, so we'll use net shooter because then we can immobilize all those enemies over to the right here. But I would like them to move first, if at all possible. Um, hmm actually wondering whether that's even the way to go because uh, I, I think we're going to kill ah uh, that's a pretty that's a pretty slow one isn't it yeah that's pretty slow so I'm thinking we're probably going to need hmm we're probably going to need reviving shock actually so let's do reviving shock and Enhancement field, but these, these are slow. These are slow abilities. I mean, stun shot is going to be super, super important for us, I think. So I might have to just take that instead. If I take that, then that's a heal. We might need a heal. We might need a heal next turn. So I'm thinking... We'll do Stun Shot and Reviving Shock. There we go. Okay, we'll do something like that and see how it goes. Okay, so the Living Bones is going to move three. It's not even going to attack. Okay, so that's that's actually perfect. This is perfect the way that the things have worked out. So now what I can do is I can pretty much just do this if I want to. Um, or I can do Stun Shot. I think Stun Shot is probably going to be more useful to use on the Living Bones at this point. And then we can use the Spell Weaver to kill this guy. But one damage is going to be wasted on this. Because I could just use one damage on this guy and then he's done. But the Living Bones is... He's only going to move three, isn't he? He doesn't even attack. Oh, okay. So that's pretty good. So let's actually just do it this way then. There we go. Nice little bit of damage right there. And now we can just skip out on this action in the Tinkerer's turn. And then we'll see the Living Bones do his thing, whatever he wants to do. He's, he's going to attack for nothing, which is great. And this guy is going to be moving over. He's going to be doing zero damage as well. I'm actually really surprised about this, to be honest. And now we can attack for two or we can use Flame Strike, but then we can't recover all our cards. So we're going to have to attack for two. And let's see what happens with that. So I'm going to attack this one over here because eliminating any enemy that is close to the Spellweaver is the best possible situation for us. We're going to try and recover all our burned cards now. Oh, such a powerful card. It is such a powerful card. 
Okay, they're all moving, that's absolutely fine. And that is it. There you go, victory. The portals suddenly blink out of existence. Whatever dark magic was reanimating the undead seems to cease and they collapse to the floor. You have survived the undead onslaught and restored peace to the sanctuary. All right, so there you go. We didn't even need to deal with them. I actually thought that uh, maybe the spawners would, you know, just disappear and then the undead would still be there. And in that case, I would have some problems. Anyway, I cannot express just how grateful I am. Truly, thank you. With the threat to the sanctuary gone, we can finally resume the restoration of the temple here. It will be some time before we are ready to resume our normal services. But I hope we can be of help in the future. I bid you farewell. Hang on a second, we did that for free? I thought we were supposed to be looking for paid job. Oh, never mind. Join a guild, they said. It'll be fun, they said. You'll make heaps of gold. <laughs> Don't mind him. Thanks to you, the temple will reopen in due time and you will be glad to receive their blessings. Now the next village we've lost contact with is the Marchers. The route is under lockdown after a number of raids from small bands of vermlings camping nearby. I want you to head up north and see if you can drive them out. Oh, and watch out for their hounds. Let these scars across my face be a warning to you. You get up close to those dogs and they'll bite back. Alright, so let us travel north. Do bear in mind that there are a number of RPG elements uh, present in the game as well, but obviously we're pretty much doing the story introduction here and a number of challenges and, and things like that. And they're kind of just give it, getting us acclimated with how the game works and everything. As you head north from Demon Spire, the path gradually turns to mud and the farmland gives way to small patches of woodland. Entering one of these thickets, you hear the howls of wolves on the wind and strange high-pitched grunts urging them on. It seems they have picked up your scent. You prepare for battle. All right, so we have Vermling Scouts who look mean, by the way. They look very mean. And we also have some wolves. And we'll have to deal with both of them. Hounds burst from the undergrowth, barking at you menacingly, soon followed by a Vermling Scout. He seems briefly taken aback at having stumbled upon a band of mercenaries, but quickly regains his composure and knocks an arrow ready to fight. All right, so we're still, oh, okay, we're, we're with some different, uh, different characters this time around. Okay, so now this is an elimination mission. We're going to have to eliminate every single person that we can. All right, so what I would like to do I would like to use fire orbs. <laughs> it's super fun to use fire orbs. Can you blame me? Can you blame me? All right, so let's see. They can potentially move up to four spaces away. So we're never getting away from these guys. They have four HP as well. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to kill them very quickly indeed. Additionally, target all enemies on the path to the primary target. Okay. Ah, uh, this might be a little problematic. Um, hmm. Okay, so I can move with this, but then we're going to be extremely slow. Is there a movement option that is a little bit quicker? No. There is not a movement option that is any quicker. Okay, so let's take a look at the scoundrel here then, because throwing knives is obviously going to be a pretty good thing for us to take. But there are no traps to utilize, so pulling people is not going to make any difference. Let's see what else we have. Single out is really powerful, by the way, but obviously we're not going to be able to use that against multiple targets right now. So throwing knives is basically going to be our thing that we, in my opinion, will have to select. Backstab is really good. Flanking strike is really good as well. I think what we're going to do is we're going to use special mixture and throwing knives. So we're going to move like behind them or something, poison one of them, and then we will use throwing knives and hopefully the additional attack that we gain from the poison being applied will give us a little advantage there. Now, otherwise, I'm not entirely sure what to go for here, to be honest, because fire orbs are going to be out of range in my opinion for the most part but we're gonna try it because fire orbs is a range of three and as you can see one two three i don't think we're going to be able to reach the vermling scout which is the main problem here and there is no movement card that is a fast moving one so 
if I were to use Ride the Wind, for example, I'd need to use Fire Orbs and Ride the Wind at the same time, and it just wouldn't make any sense. So I'm going to try to use Mana Bolt to hopefully damage... Actually, I'm not going to... You know what? I'm not going to use Mana Bolt. I'm going to use Frost Armor, I think. Frost Armor is actually really... Yeah, Frost Armor is actually really good. Yeah, I'm going to use Frost Armor instead. Hopefully that's going to be a, a, a good... Uh... Oh, did I just... You know what I did? I did that wrong. Yep, I did that wrong. Okay, we might need to restart this one. We'll see, we'll see. Okay, so they're actually um, acting really fast here, as you can no doubt see. They are right up uh, up in our grill, and uh, this is not, not very good whatsoever. Okay, so we're going to use throwing knives. We're going to target two people. Uh, the Vermling Scout might actually be useful, but it seems like he's not actually even going to be attacking us right now, so I guess we will just attack the two wolves, and then we will see if we can get some good damage on them. Oh, they attack back? Oh, they have retaliation! Oh, dear. Oh, that... Okay, you know what? Can I... Can I, uh... Can I restart this? I actually want to restart this. I think this is... I, I, I made a huge error to begin with because obviously I had the scoundrel um, perfectly set up but I didn't realize they had retaliation and also the spell weaver was not in a good way whatsoever so we are going to use frost armor once again and we are then going to be using f fire orbs that's going to make much more of a difference in my opinion now we cannot possibly beat the wolves in terms of their uh, speed. So we're... Well, I mean, technically we could if we used Flanking Strike, actually. So, I mean, uh, uh, I don't really want to do that, to be honest, because I would much rather do something else. Um, maybe what we could do is actually use... We could use Flanking Strike and kill one of them really fast, actually. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's just use that and Flanking Mixture, and we'll see how that goes this time around. And that, this is the point. The game is very replayable, and in general, you're going to have to be a bit careful. You might have to restart every now and again, because you might get things wrong, you might make a mistake like I did just now, and that's the point. It is very replayable in that in that aspect, and there are also numbers of things that you can do later on in the game that are going to provide so much more replayability as well. Anyway, um, I'm thinking what we're probably going to do is we'll use Special Mixture first, to poison someone that we want to attack with the spell weaver in just a second. So I'm going to move over here. And we're going to be poisoning this one. Because we are not going to need the poison with flanking strike. Flanking strike is going to be able to win against one of them without any problems. As you can see right there, four damage, easy, easy kill. The scoundrel's already killed one, so that's great. So now we're only going to be taking probably one damage. Yes, only one damage. That's good. I'm perfectly happy with that. The Spellweaver also does have healing capabilities. Do bear that in mind. So now what we can also do is we can use Frost Armor if we want, or we can use um, Fire Orbs. And I think I will be using... Oh, fire Orbs, are you serious? Okay, apparently I will be using Frost Armor to attack which is not something that I wanted to do, but we're going to try it nevertheless. There we go. That's a nice kill. And then the Vermling Scout will hopefully not be able to do anything to us. I'm going to move over here and pick up that loot. There we go. All right, so I used Fire Orbs for basically nothing, which was a huge tactical mistake, but it's fine. It's okay, you know. We can take our time. We will be fine. We just need to... Uh, make the most of things. So let's use Impaling Eruption just so that I can move a little bit. Let's use Backstab first and then we'll try to... We could pull him. We could pull him with Smoke Bomb, but I don't think we really need to do that. I can use Venom Shiv instead to move. And I think I will do that. He's going to move. He's not actually doing anything, hilariously enough. So let's move with... I could actually move with either of these. I think, you know what, I'm not going to do Backstab. I'm actually going to do Venom Shiv because it doesn't burn it. So I'm actually going to use the movement portion of this. 
Why can I not move? Oh, I'm immobilized. Ah. I'm immobilized. Okay. Well, ah. Well, that's not... Uh, that's not it's just a, it's a, yeah, that's not particularly good, is it? Okay, so we're going to have to skip the scoundrel's turn altogether, which is... Oh, just fantastic. Oh, I love that. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's just move over here with the spell weaver. We're just going to get her in position for the next couple of turns. I'm going to try to use mana bolt here. Hopefully we'll get a plus one. Yes, we did get a plus one. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Very nice indeed. And now we can have a long rest, basically. So every single thing can uh, recover all our cards, but we are not going to be recovering. Uh, yeah, we'll recover all our cards, actually. Yeah, we'll get all of them. So let's do that. And let's do the long rest with the scoundrel as well. Why not? Okay, so select an ability card to burn. Okay, so we can select any one of these. I'm going to probably select Impaling Eruption, even though this one is really powerful. I'm going to select that because I personally think the Fire Orbs is going to be more useful, as well as Mana Bolt and Frost Armor being more useful too. So we'll do that. And otherwise, we're probably going to get rid of Venom Shiv because Special Mixture, in my opinion, is very useful to poison enemies really, really easily. But it doesn't... It, yeah, I mean, it has the ability to move you into range as well, which I really quite like. So Venom Shiv will be burnt. And now we get all our cards back, which is very nice. However, that was a waste of a turn, but it doesn't really matter because we, we don't have any kind of turn limit at the moment anyway. So we can pretty much just take our time and relax. Oh, yes. Okay, so let's actually have a look here. We're going to move. Uh, we need to we need to use throwing knives, I think. Okay, let's so let's use throwing knives, and then we'll do. We could do pool, or we could do. I mean, we need to move, don't we? So let's use. Let's use flanking strike to move. Yeah, that seems good to me. All right, so let's do that. And then we also probably want to move a little bit with the Spell Weaver. But we need to be a bit careful of that. So I could do Mana Bolt. We could do Frost Armor. Probably do Mana Bolt. And then we'll do Ride the Wind. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do Ride, to, ride the Wind. We're going to open the door. See what's happening in here. You have located the sparsely defended Vermling encampment. Driving the enemies away from here should make the trade route safe once more. Okay, well, that's that's going to be very pleasing to me then. Okay, so there's only one wolf here. So that should be relatively simple for us to deal with. And now the enemies will be coming for us. So what I'm going to do is I'm literally going to do something a little bit, uh, a little bit cautious, shall we say. A little bit cautious. So we're just going to skip the movement and we're going to allow the enemy to come to us. So let's skip the attack in the Spellweaver's turn. The wolf is going to move very quickly indeed. As you can see, four hexes. That's really fast. And then we'll be able to use either... Th yeah, we'll, we'll be able to... We could we could potentially use throwing knives. Let's actually move forward here. Pick up the loot. Yes, this seems good. And now let's skip the movement. Use the throwing knives. Attack this. Hopefully we'll get a plus one. Ah, minus one. Are you serious? Well, thankfully we're not in melee range, so retaliate doesn't work at this point. And now the Vermling Scouts can, of course, move and do whatever they want to do, but I want them to basically move closer to us so that we can make a very quick turnaround here where we'll be able to rush the, the Scoundrel in, do a massive backstab, kill one of them instantly, and then hopefully have the Spellweaver do a similar thing. So that's what I'm hoping for right now. Otherwise, we can just use Flame Strike if we want to. I think we'll probably do that. We'll use Frost Armor. And then we'll use Flame Strike. And that seems good to me. And then otherwise, we probably want to do something like Poison. Probably Special Mixture. We'll probably move around there. And then we'll use... Ooh. Ah, that's, that's a bit problematic. I don't really want to use Backstab here because it's going to burn it. Don't really want to burn backstab on a wolf, if I'm honest. So I'm thinking we'll probably do a thing where we pull the enemy to us and then... Can we kill them with anything? Single out. 
single out might be good. So I think we'll use smoke bomb, then single out. The wolf is now moving a little bit slower, so that's good. Okay, so we can now do that. So let's pull the wolf to us. Now this is probably not advisable because it's going to retaliate against us potentially. Unless it dies? Yeah. Okay, so when it dies, obviously retaliate doesn't go off. So that's actually really good. So I'm very happy with this. And now we basically can just buff ourselves with frost armor and we can allow the Vermling Scouts to move closer to us. And then hopefully in the next turn, we'll be able to do something like move out there with the Spellweaver and uh, do massive damage with fire orbs or something along those lines. We still have backstab, do bear that in mind with the Scoundrel as well. And they are, I mean, that's just a super powerful ability. Okay, so we have Frost Armor, which is going to ignore the next two sources of damage. So I'm very confident in what I can do right now. So what I'm gonna do is I will literally do fire orbs followed by reviving ether. And I know that this is gonna make me really slow, but just bear with me. I think it will work. I think it will work. Yeah, <laughs> it might not, it might not. Do bear that in mind, yes. It might not work, but we'll, we'll try it. And that's the whole fun of the game actually as well. Just trying things out and seeing how it works because they give you so many tools to, uh, to do that. So let's have a look here. Okay, attack, movement, okay, that's perfectly fine, all right. Oh, look exactly the same initiative as the Spellweaver, so it seems like the Spellweaver will get to move first. Very nice indeed. Okay, so let's move over here. And let's do a backstab. Ah, uh, let's actually poison someone. Yeah, let's poison someone. Personally, this isn't even necessary. Uh, basically, the Scoundrel could pretty much just end end her turn and we wouldn't even really need to worry about it so the spellweaver can literally just murder everything now so let's just uh, go over here and then the fire orbs will murder boom you know i probably could have actually finished this entire level in many less turns let's just say that i would have been able to finish it in many many less turns if i was a little bit more a little bit braver shall we say just a little bit braver then i would have been uh, i would have been all right just one more route to clear and i should have re-established contact with enough suppliers to reopen my shop for business i'm sure you can't wait to get your hands on some decent gear well, there's some incentive for you. As your core training nears its end, I hope you're getting used to how the various abilities and effects interact with each other. You'll certainly be needing some advanced techniques on the quests to come. Anyhow, I've tracked down a potential fifth mercenary for our crew. If you can get him on board... Hmm, this guy is Fist of Stone, and I mean literally. Alright, so we're going to be going over there. And bear in mind that the world map is actually really large as well, and you're going to be able to pretty much explore wherever you want and try to maintain the trade routes and everything. You again find yourself at the entrance to a once abandoned crypt and begin to ask yourself, what makes all these mercenaries keep exploring tombs of undead? Gold, it must be gold. You enter the tomb expecting to find another individual in need of your tactical knowledge. All right, so we are probably going to only get one character to control here and it's going to be Cragheart. Yeah, there we go. Meet everyone's favorite walking boulder, the Cragheart. You're badly outnumbered here and we'll need to employ some defensive tactics. Let's go over how retaliate works and see how we can use that to help old Craggy out of this mess. Like shield, retaliate is an active bonus that can either last the round or be persistent, usually with a termination condition for the latter. While active, melee attackers will have damage inflicted upon them equal to the retaliate value. Surrounded by this many living bones, retaliation against any that attack equates to an incredible amount of damage. Assuming you, you can survive the round, that is. Oh, and one last thing. Note that Earth is infused already. Remember to click the consume icon on the card. Yes, as I said to you in the previous episode, that's exactly what you're going to need to do. All right, look at this. On the next six melee attacks, gain retaliate too. That is super, super good. So we're going to do something with that. So let's do that. Uh, he doesn't need a healing potion right now, so I'm perfectly happy to continue. Actually, do I do I want to do a short rest right here? Kill four living bones this round. 
What? Okay, I think I'm probably going to need to do a short rest then. Yes, okay. Yeah, burn the tornado. Yeah, I definitely will need... <laughs> I will need to do a short rest to be able to kill uh, four living bones. That's, that's amazing. Okay, so what we are going to need to do is we're going to need this. We're going to need retaliate. And we're also going to need something else. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. Target all adjacent enemies. Ah, that seems good, but they're going to... I'm going to need to... Oh, that's going to be... Oh, that's going to be kind of hard, actually. I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do here, to be fair. Okay, so I need to eliminate... F kill four living bones this round? Huh. I actually don't know how to do this. I guess we'll do unstable upheaval. And then we will do the retaliate. And that's pretty much all I can think of. But let's try it, shall we? I mean, that's the whole that's the whole fun of the game. Trying out things and seeing what works and what doesn't. Okay, so target... Ah! Target all enemies. Okay, so that is probably going to be uh, something quite good. So let's infuse that. Okay, so that actually doesn't really help me that much. Uh, to be fair. So... I don't think this is really going to make any difference, to be honest. It says kill four this round. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. Because they're not within range. So what I... Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, he doesn't have... Does he have... Re, no, he doesn't have retaliate by, by a being a passive, does he? I don't think I'm going to be able to do this. Retaliate is going to kill him, though, as you can see. Retaliate is going to kill this guy as well and this one and maybe if this guy actually moves and then attacks then it might work but it's only going to do two damage for the retaliate so it's not going to work in that case not unless he gets a massive amount of extra damage ah he's attacking multiple times aha okay yes that's definitely going to work then okay perfect all right i was worried you know i was worried but this is exactly how cards are supposed to interact is actually kind of crazy okay so you took a fair bit of damage but that was a great result a well-timed retaliate can be devastatingly powerful by the way you can see the active bonus from opposing strike is still well active just look at crag cards portrait at the top of the screen the little pips in the active bonuses box show you at a glance how many instances remain and you can check the effect text and xp yield by hovering over it did you notice how the Living Bones' shield didn't prevent any retaliate damage? Just like traps, retaliate damage is not explicitly an attack and as such will deal exactly the amount it says it will, unaffected by shields, modifiers and the like. Hmm. Right. Finish them bones off and we can get out of here. Alright, so that is perfectly fine. I'm gonna take a healing potion, I suppose, because I can? Actually, I can't do that right now. Anyway, uh, let's see... What else can I do? Okay, so how many do I have left? I I guess it's infinite. Yeah, on the next six. Oh, okay, so the next two attacks will be will be perfectly fine. Okay, so if I do, hmm, I'm thinking some range. Uh, Avalanche is probably going to be pretty good. So let's move, let's move rumbling advance and then use Avalanche. How's that going to work? That that might work. Okay, so let's let's talk about that. I think that might be good. Backup ammunition actually seems good. On your next four ranged attacks, gain add target. So I have range, don't I? Somewhere? This one. But that is way too slow. This one? This one could also work. Yes. Yes. Actually, I think I will do this instead. Okay. So we will do this, and then we will do backup ammunition. Okay, that seems fun. Let's end that. And he's going to go after me, which is great, because that means I can now use a healing potion if I want to, which I think I will. There we go. And now what we can do is some damage. Uh, ah. I have made a slight error. <laughs> uh... Ah, uh, lovely, yes. Mm. I always do that, you know. I always just go, hey, you know what? I think I could probably uh, do this. And then it never never works. Okay. 
Yeah, I, I'm gonna move over in this direction, I think. Yeah, so hopefully they're not gonna be able to reach me. Oh, they are going to reach me. So two damage, okay. Yeah, lovely. Okay, so he's not even gonna get retaliated. Well, at least they're close to me now. I should have done exactly what I said I was going to do and use this. Rumbling advance would have made all the difference in my opinion. All adjacent allies and enemies suffer one damage. That would have made all the difference. Would have just won me the game straight away there. And we're just going to do avalanche now. And he's actually... Oh, are you serious? They're actually going to go first this time. Hopefully we're going to get... Oh, they got a plus one as well. Okay. And he's going to heal. Yeah. Zero damage from that one at least. So that's good. But now he's healing. Oh, oh great. <sighs> okay, so let, let me... Um, well, let me... Healing is basically I, I could move I could just move skip movement and then just do damage. So that's pretty good. I mean I should have done that before, you see. This is what would have actually given me the win. Uh we can only hope that I get a plus one. I've got a minus one on that one, of course. Okay. Uh yeah. Okay, so we're gonna have to do a short rest here. Yeah, that's perfectly fine. There we go. Okay, so we'll get Rumbling Advance back, and then we'll just do uh, Crushing Grasp. But let's hope that he's not first. He is going to be first. Of course he is. And he's also going to be able to heal himself too, by the way. Oh, thankfully he didn't do any damage. Oof, close one. Very close. And he healed himself, of course. But that is fine, because as I said before, we can just do this, and then we can attack... Can we, yeah, we, we can, we can attack right there. There we go. Let's just, there we go. And then we will do an attack. Hopefully we will get a plus one. No, we didn't. Ah, oh, why, why me? Why me? Ah, uh, okay. Let's do another short rest then by the looks of things. Okay. So rumbling advance is going to have to get burned and we will have to do crushing grasp and Massive boulder, I guess. Oh, he's slower than me. Oh, you're dead. You're dead, sir. You are absolutely dead. Thank goodness. That's all I can say. Okay, so yeah, let's um, let's do crushing grass. Actually, wait a minute. Let's not do that. Let's do massive boulder just to make sure that he dies. Yes. Make sure that he dies as a result of this. There we go. Whew. Okay, that was a bit too difficult, wasn't it? We're going to use the looting option as well, just to take some more gold. Thank you very much. There we go. See? The game is getting very difficult right now. That looked like an unmanageable situation at first. But as you saw, if you play your cards right, you can navigate even the tricky... You know what? If I had just literally done rumbling advance when I thought and stopped trying to be a little bit fancy with the cards, then I would have been perfectly fine. Sometimes fancy is not better. So, yeah, anyway... Crag hearts on board, that's five mercenaries recruited. I reckon just one more and we should have a large enough crew to take on some quests further out from Demon's Gate. You know, if we can find someone capable of summoning allies to the battlefield, it'll feel like we have even more mercs still. I know some vermlings are quite proficient at handling beastly brethren of theirs. Vermlings? We're going to recruit a vermling? Don't let the rodent exterior fool you. They aren't all feral scavengers. Some vermlings develop so strong psychic abilities. And rumor has it one such vermling, Mind Thief, is hunting down demons nearby. Would you say no to a demon hunter joining the guild just because she looks a bit rattish? I vote we find this Mind Thief and see if she fancies joining us for a chance at greater glory than hunting demons. Okay, perhaps not greater glory just yet, but glory all the same. And... Ah, uh, I think that's going to be it for this episode. If you would like to check out Gloomhaven, there is a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.